Okay, so last night was a bit of a fiasco taking out Project CB9. It's the second time since putting this car on wheels and tires. Now, when I came out of the gym, the battery went dead. And I felt the car was acting up on the way to the gym. My speedometer kept cutting on and off. The headlights were dim. The turn signals were going berserk. And I was very hesitant to shut that car off in the parking lot. I should have just went straight home, but instead I shut the car off and took a chance. And sure enough, when I got back outside, the battery was dead as a doornail. Called up my neighbor, brought his jumper cables, and we just got the car jumped. And as soon as I turned the lights on, the car just suddenly cut off. So my neighbor said it was a bad sell on the battery. So the battery that was in this car was an inexpensive one made by Duracell. And it was from October 2020. So one of two situations going on with that Duracell battery. Either it was just a cheap, inexpensive battery. Or I've got charging issues with the alternator. So I got the voltage meter right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook up the black lead to the negative and the red lead to the positive. And once I crank up the car, I should have about 14.3, maybe 14.4 volts. And then when the car is off, you should have about 12.5 or 12.3 volts. So let's go ahead and check it with the car off right now. Okay, so with the engine off on Project CB9 and the multimeter set to the voltage setting, I'm at 12.49 volts. So let's go ahead and crank up the car and see what we have. Well, bad news. It looks like I bought expensive battery for no reason. It's diehard gold, but it is what it is. Looks like the alternator is not doing its job on Project CB9. I'm only coming up with about 12.02 or 12.03 volts. So I should be reading about 13.3 or 13.5 or something above that. But alternator is not charging the battery. So that's the issue with this car. So now I need to go shopping for an alternator for Project CB9. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the yard and find one and pull one from a wrecked car. Or if I'm going to go online and find a rebuilt one. I guess we'll find out, but I'll keep you guys posted. But I'm not going to drive this car in the meantime. I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up to the battery tender. And then we need to find an alternator. Alternator removal on a 1990 through 1997 Honda Accord. First things first, you want to go ahead, peel back this rubber boot. There should be a 12 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and undo that bolt and remove this cable. Be careful not to hit your wrench on any other metal part. You don't want to short this thing out. Second step, remove this rubber boot off the wiring harness. Press in and remove it outwards. Third step, go ahead and take a 14 millimeter deep socket and go ahead and loosen this bolt right here. And that's the other end of it that basically holds the top side of the alternator. And then right here on the bottom side of the alternator, there's a 12 millimeter bolt. You want to go ahead and loosen that up. And then right here on the bottom where that bracket's at, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and loosen those up. So let's go ahead and get started removing the alternator on this H22. Alrighty, alternator is finally out. That was a little tougher than I thought. Tight working spaces. Had to remove the cruise control servo. Just get a little bit extra working space right here. Anyhow, it's finally out. I'll go over more detailed instructions when we get back. But we're going to go ahead and take a trip up to the yard. I got a printout of 1990 through 1997 Honda Accords. Because all those alternators are compatible with the 2.2 engine. So I'm going to go ahead and take this up to the yard with me. Because I believe there's an $8 core charge. So I no longer need this. So now I know how it's removed and I got my tool bags ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a trip up to the local pickup part. 
Okay, this is gonna be one of the quickest yard visits ever. I'm on the hunt for an alternator for my Honda Accord CB9. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. 1996 brown sedan. Check out the alternator. Alternator is gone. Somebody grabbed it. No sense in checking the mileage. Let's go ahead and check out the other ones. 1997 Accord in black. This is a V6 engine, so this will not work from alternator. Let's go ahead and check out another Accord. 1994 Accord, light blue sedan, looks to be an LX trim, front end collision. Let's go ahead and check the mileage on this thing. Okay, the gauge cluster has already been yanked out by someone. Let me go ahead and look at this insurance sticker. Progressive insurance, 126,205. That's not too shabby. Let's check out the alternator. Now the good thing about pulling parts from a wrecked car is you know it ran before it came to the yard here. And we got the four cylinder engine. People have already yanked some parts off this thing. Alternator is still intact, although it does look original. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this on my notes. And we're gonna go ahead and continue looking in the yard, see if we can find maybe a rebuilt one. So I'll write this one down, this is available. 1995 sedan in black, looks to be EX trim, has a sunroof, disc brakes. Radio's been yanked out. Let's see what kind this is. That's just a Kenwood right there. 114,000 miles. That's pretty low. Let's go ahead and check the engine compartment. Okay, signs of front end collision. That's a good thing. This car ran before it came to the yard. It is the four cylinder model, and the alternator is still intact. However, the bad thing about this collision is the core support is pushed up against this engine right here, including the alternator. So it might be tough to get this thing out. And look at that sticker, I think that's a Denso, so this might be an original alternator. So I'm going to go ahead and write my notes that this car has been in a collision. I don't know if I can get my pry bar and pull this core support backwards in order to get the alternator out, but it's got relatively low miles on this car. Let's continue on and check out the other cords in this yard. 1996 sedan white. I believe this is a V6 with those unique wheels right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hood. Yep, this is a V6. This alternator won't work. Let's keep going. 1997 green sedan. Looks like it has those unique wheels. I believe this is a V6. Let's go ahead and check the engine bay. Yep, this is a V6 model. Alternator won't work. Let's go ahead and check the other cords. 1996 white sedan. Someone put some wheel spacers on this car. I'm not sure if this is the mileage. 347, 632. It sure enough is. 347,000 miles, 632. And we got Pioneer CD player. Okay, we got a front end collision, which is a good thing. This car definitely ran before it came to the yard. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. And the alternator is still there. I can actually see a Honda tag on there. So I'm not sure if this alternator is original. I'd be shocked if it was. But that core support is pushed up a little bit against it. I might be able to get this alternator out, most likely. I'd have to get that power steering pump out first and then take a pry bar and pull back on the course port, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and write a note on the sheets, take a look at the other ones, and we'll make a deciding factor. 1993 CB7 in a light brown color. Alternator is still intact. And a label there says CarQuest. This is most likely a rebuilt alternator. Let's go ahead and check the mileage. Looks like 173,000 miles. Now, I'm not seeing much damage on this car, so I'm not sure why this is in the yard. I don't know if it's because of rust taking over, mechanical failure. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, the other side is unwrecked. So I guess most likely mechanical failure, the owner decided to give up on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and write this thing down on the sheet. Keep looking. 1992 sedan in white. Alternator is gone. This is a no-go. Let's check out the other ones. 1997 sedan, light blue color, four cylinder engine, and alternator has been snatched out already. This is a no-go. 1995 black sedan, EX trim, heavy rear end collision. Got the biohazard symbol in there. Gotta be careful if you go inside. Looks to be 208,000 miles from this view. I'm not going inside this car. It's almost like a maze to get to the front of these cars sometimes. And this thing actually has some front end collision as well. Probably in a pilot. Okay. 
and the alternator is still there. Let's go ahead and give it a closer inspection. Now take a look at that blue sticker. I believe this is Denso, which is the original manufacturer on these cars. So let me go ahead and make some notes on my sheet and check out the other cores before we make a deciding factor. Okay, back to the brown CB7 sedan. Went ahead and decided to pull up this alternator. About 20 minutes later, I got it. Somebody did me a favor, removing the power steering pump. But anyways, let me show you what's going on here. So if I spin this shaft right here, it's pretty smooth. You hear nothing. But however, if I tip it upwards, and I spin this, you hear that noise? I'm a little skeptical on that. I don't know if some metal debris fell in there or not, but I'm not liking that noise right there. For whatever reason, you turn on the side and you spin it, it doesn't make that noise. So I'm gonna think about this alternator. I'm not sure if this is the best bet. I'm gonna pull out another one, see if it makes that noise, and we'll go from there. Okay, I ended up coming back to this 1995 black sedan with the biohazard. Went ahead and got the alternator out. Let me go ahead and show you guys what's going on here. So here's our alternator. So indicated on this blue label, this is a Nippon Denso. So I believe this is an OEM unit. Hopefully this is rebuilt. But let me go ahead and show you guys the pulley. So I put the alternator upright. I'm going to spin the pulley, see if it makes a noise. That's pretty good right there. There's no clinging noise like the other one. Let me go ahead and put it on the side. So if I put it on the side, I spin it. Sounds pretty good. There's no funny noise. And there's no play whatsoever on this pulley. So the bearings are perfectly good. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this alternator and go over to that brown CB7. Do a comparison just to make sure everything looks right. And then we'll go ahead and check out. Now that this Accord has been heavily disassembled with the parts on the front end, I think this is a perfect opportunity to show you how this thing mounts in position. So looking down here in the engine bay, there's a 12 millimeter nut on this side right here, which is underneath the alternator. And then you got a 10 millimeter, which actually controls the tensioner. So what happens is once you tighten this bolt, it basically pulls this thing along the guide right there. So as this bolt gets tighter, it just goes up and up and up and tightens up on the belt right there. As you can see how many threads there are, there's a lot of room for adjustment on belt tensioner. But on the CB7 Accord, you got two 10 millimeter bolts right here. So this generation has a different tensioner system. And then going through the top, you got a 14 millimeter bolt running through this whole top right there. So once you have the 14 millimeter bolt off the top, the 12 millimeter nut on the bottom, and the two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom, alternator should come out once you have these connections off. And this alternator connection right here is a 10 millimeter, by the way. And I found it easier to disconnect the battery because you don't want to be hitting sparks with your wrench and whatnot if your wrench touches any metal. All right, a little side-by-side -side comparison of the CB7 alternator versus the CD7. Now, the only difference I see right now is there's basically a gap with some of these fins. You come over to this one, those fins are solid right there. This connection is the same, that connection is the same, and the top mounting shaft is the exact same right there. And upon closer inspection, I see a major discrepancy over here in the pulleys. I got four ribs on the CB7, and over on the CD7, I got five ribs. So I've been pretty upset if I brought this thing home and it wouldn't match up with my belt. So sadly, I'm gonna have to bring home the CB7 alternator right here. So that's the main differences between the CD7 and the CB7. The number of ribs on the pulleys are totally different. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this thing back, take this thing, cross my fingers, it works out well. We'll go ahead and check out. Okay, I'm back from Pick Apart. Now this alternator, after I returned my $8 core charge, was $33.59 after taxes. Now let me go ahead and show you guys how this thing reinstalls while it's out of the car. Okay, so down here is your lower bracket. As you can see, there's one bolt right there without the nut on it. You wanna get this bolt through the bottom of the alternator. And then you have this opening with the threads let me go ahead and show you guys what bolt goes on that. So this right side bolt is the one that goes on that minor bracket. And this basically is a tensioner that pulls that one bolt forwards and backwards in order to tighten up the alternator. And then once you have the alternator connections all taken care of on the bottom, this is the shaft where the top bolt goes through, this opening, and this opening right there. And that's basically right here. This is the top of the alternator where that one long bolt goes through. 
this is very tight so trying to get this in and out might be a little tricky so just a little FYI on that so I'm gonna do my best in order to get this thing back into the project CB9 so let's go ahead and reinstall all the layer Okay, I got the alternator back in position. Everything is now loose. So the main top bolt is in and the bottom tensioner bolts are in. Now over here on the left-hand side, this is the 10 millimeter bolt that mounts to that long stud that goes to the engine block. And then over here on the right-hand side, that's basically your tensioner bolt right there. So let me go ahead and show you guys outside the car here. I grabbed an extra piece while I was at the yard. So this is what your tensioner assembly looks like outside the engine bay. Here's the hole, and that mounts to that long swing arm that goes the engine block. And this is your main tensioner bolt right here. And where this eyelet assembly is at, that's basically where the bottom of the alternator bolt slides right through. And there's a 12 millimeter nut on this side. And once this is tightened right here, it basically pulls the alternator backwards and backwards and it tightens up the belt that's on the pulley itself. So once everything is tightened with the proper belt tension, go ahead and tighten that bottom bolt and then go ahead and tighten up the top main alternator bolt, which is right underneath the power steering pump. And then once the top and bottom alternator bolts are all tightened up, go ahead and take your wiring harness, plug that in the side right there, and then go ahead and take your main alternator cable and go ahead and attach that to the terminal right there with a 10 millimeter nut. And just a word of advice, go ahead and disconnect your battery while you're doing this, because you want any chance with your ratchet or your wrench hitting some type of metal object and basically causing sparks. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up this installation on the alternator. Alrighty guys, hope that this video explained all the steps that's needed to replace an alternator on your 1990 to 1997 Honda Accord. Now, if you ever have any doubt with your electrical system, just get the multimeter out and see if it's putting out more than 14 volts while the car is running. And if it's not, more than likely the alternator is bad. Now, regarding pricing, I swapped mine out at the junkyard in which they gave me an $8 core charge credit, which came out to around $33 total. The local parts stores, looks like they're charging anywhere from $100 to $200, depending on the store. It's a gamble grabbing one from the yard, but it's nice to save some money and go hunting for one at the local yard as well. Anyhow, if you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.